Hey, welcome back to episode 26. I got a really good one for you today. Might be a little controversial for those hardcore casters out there, though. We are making a metal crucible. Now, a metal crucible can be really good or it can be really bad if it fails. Kelly suggested I make some out of some HSS steel, and I just so happen to have some laying around in the shop. By the way, if you haven't seen Kelly's channel, you have to check it out. I'll put a link in the notes below. I lucked out with the HSS steel. It was just the right height, so all I had to do is cut out a bottom. Now this bottom is going to be cut out of 3 8 plate steel, and then I'm going to make probably one of the better fits that I can make for it. I'm actually going to tap it in, you'll see later. Now there are some drawbacks to making your own crucible out of metal. One of them might be a safety thing. Some metal crucibles, whether you make them good or not, they still could fail, so you have to be ready for that, or accept the risks if you're going to use one. The second part is, you're also going to be adding some alloys or carbon to your aluminum. And, I mean, if you're not doing space age stuff, you might be okay with it. And what I do, I'm pretty good with it. But each to their own, right? you got to do your own research and accept your own risk. Now, I I'm not going to lie to you. I, I, I kind of lucked out here. I, I meant to cut it a little bit oversize and then grind it down to size, but it, it turned out it was perfect. So, th I mean, there you go. Now I'm just going to jump in there and grind out the inside. I want to get metal to metal so I get the best possible weld I can get. And then I'm going to go back later and weld the, the living bejesus out of it. But before I do that, I better get those corners round so it fits in there just right. And that's just a matter of just kind of picking away at it and then kind of sizing it up. Now before I weld that bottom on there, I had a bit of a fleeting thought. I figured to myself, you know, sometimes I get a little slag falling into the mold and everything and what if I put a skimmer on the top of it? Now, if it doesn't work, I can just always pour it out the other side, but stay tuned for other videos, and I'm going to let you know how that idea worked out, or, or didn't work out. Now, no judgment here. I got a little bit sloppy and just kind of tacked it on and cut it off, but, I mean, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Here's another idea I had kind of on the fly. My son brought some water out to me earlier today, and he brought a juice jug with him as well, full of water. When you look at the end of a Tupperware or a coffee pot, it has that kind of little anti-drip thing on the end of it, and that's what I was kind of going for there, so it doesn't run back down when I'm done. Now, check out this sweet fit that I was telling you about, well, okay, how I lucked out and I could just tap it in. It's pretty sweet, I'm not going to lie to you. And what you didn't see here is I had actually tapped it in about maybe an eighth inch or just under a quarter inch, just so that I didn't have that bottom flat part sitting on the ground. I wanted it to sit on that lip and so I could weld around the inside of that lip as well and get a, a superb weld. Now, I've been paying attention in school for sure, or well, out in the field when I'm watching other welders weld. They always tell me to weld each of the four corners and then weld the bejesus out of it. And that's what I did here. And it worked out quite well and it didn't distort at all. And now that I got all four corners tacked up, now it's time to lay down some really good beads and make sure it doesn't come off. Now I assure you this fin that I'm about to weld on here is not for aerodynamics. In fact, the idea is I'm going to be able to hook a hook through there and kind of tip it over, controlled, and get the aluminum where I want it to be. And that's right, I'm going to weld the bejesus out of that too. Now I really lucked out here. This already had a half inch hole drilled in it, and then I'm just going to weld it on both sides. That sh should be good enough. I mean, I'm not going to trust it with my life. All right, now that we're back out in the machine shop here, this is pretty easy here, watch this. I opened up the vise, just enough, kind of setting it up like a set of V-blocks. And then I found center between the opening of the vise, and that's going to give me center so I can drill it right in the middle. Now the idea here is repeatability, so I'm going to set the edge of the crucible up on the edge of the vise, and that way when I roll it around, I'm going to get the same every time on both sides. For any of you out there that do not own a center drill, you need to jump on Amazon and buy a decent quality center drill right now. This is going to save you so much headache and so much time down the road if you don't own one. I mean, if I didn't have a center drill here, I would be chasing that all over the place and it would never hit center. And now for the dry fit up. I think it fits up pretty good. And hey, if you haven't hit subscribe or thrown some comments down below, throw some comments down below. I'm sure you saw some safety stuff that you're just dying to throw out there. And I'd really appreciate the feedback on anything you have to say. The goal is to make us all better and everyone can learn from my mistakes so that you don't make the same mistakes as well.